the Heinkel 219 Night Fighter takes off in War Thunder. Let's check it out. The origins of the HE-219 are a years-long drama that could be a Netflix miniseries full of desperation, political intrigue, and drama. Throughout all the maneuverings by management and the government, the design itself went through a number of changes throughout its evolution before the final production versions matured and solidified. Most notably, the aircraft's first concept, called the P-1055, was originally intended to use the DB610 engine, which was basically two DB605s grafted together through a shared gearbox and propeller shaft. They tried to create a new classification for this, calling it a power system instead of an engine, but there were enormous engineering challenges and development problems with it led to a number of the designs intended to actually use the thing being scaled back cancelled entirely or delayed, including the P-1055. Now the redesigned aircraft, now called the P-1060, was adapted to use the more familiar DB-603 engines. The 603 was a good engine, but it offered nowhere near the power of the 610, which meant that the HE-219's eventual performance ended up being held back somewhat from its true design potential. Now, the plane did include a pretty large number of innovative features, such as annular radiators, ejection seats, and radar. The plane eventually entered service in 1943 as a night fighter, and it enjoyed some early success, but still had limitations due to the scaled-back engines. The early versions of the plane included proposals to use it for reconnaissance, and one high-speed version to hunt de Havilland mosquitoes, but in the end, only the A-2 fighter from the initial production run and the upgraded A-7 night fighter were actually produced in any quantity. And while still a quite advanced design for the time, the HE-219 never reached its design potential as it never received more powerful engines that it was intended to use, and only around 300 were built. It flew until the end of the war. What we get in War Thunder is the HE-219A7, a premium strike aircraft and rank 4 of the German air tree, at battle rating 4.7. One of the unique features of the plane is its Fugue 220 Liechtenstein SN2 radar set. This is a fixed dipole search radar that continually scans out in front of the aircraft to a range of around 5 kilometers. There's no ability to lock on targets or anything like that, and the in-game usefulness can be somewhat limited. Even still, the radar can be an advantage in just about every game mode except for arcade battles, as it'll sometimes allow you to find targets before they're spotted visually. If you need more info about how to use a dipole search radar, you should check out my video on Aircraft Radar and War Thunder. Now for weapons, the HE-219 is armed to the teeth. This thing has a pair of 30mm Mark 108 cannons, another pair of 30mm Mark 103 cannons, and a pair of 20mm MG-151 cannons, giving it a total one-second burst mass of over 14 kilograms. The firepower of this thing is just insane, especially at this low of a BR. There are some caveats, though, as the ballistics on the guns can be a little tricky, and it might be worth thinking about using the vertical targeting setting. Still, all of the guns are basically right on the center line, so aiming isn't too difficult. Plus, all of its guns can take ammo belts with the Minengeschoss rounds, which increases the firepower even further. There aren't any external weapons or anything, but... You don't need them anyway. The flight performance of the HE-219 is generally typical of twin-engined heavy prop fighters. Its rate of climb is okay with WEP, not so great on regular engine power. It can absorb small caliber hits pretty well, and it has a respectable maximum speed at altitude, at least for this BR. However, its turn rate isn't especially impressive, 
and at lower speeds, every aspect of its performance suffers badly. The plane has combat flaps, which you can safely deploy at around 450 kilometers an hour, and a respectable tolerance to heavy Gs. I frequently use this in regular games for, you know, boom and zoom diving tactics, and I've never run into any wing rip problems. Now, it's worth emphasizing the dogfight maneuverability for a moment, or more specifically, the general lack of dogfight maneuverability. As with most twin-engine prop fighters, the HE-219 isn't generally well-suited to close-end turning fights. Sometimes you'll be able to get the jump on people, but this'll be the exception rather than the rule. With this particular plane, the real problem is how badly the control surfaces underperform at lower speeds. Once you get into a turn fight, it might seem okay at first, but once you bleed off some of your initial energy, your performance is going to get worse and worse with each passing second. Whereas some of the single-engine fighters you can fly against are going to be doing just fine at lower speeds. One last thing to call out with this plane is that it's generally resistant to damage. It can usually make it back to base even with one engine out, and even with really heavy damage, it can still be combat effective sometimes. So don't be too quick to J out. Wait until you actually go down. Flying the HE-219 into air battles gives you some options. Since it's classed as a strike aircraft, and we'll get to why in a minute, you get an air spawn. So if you want to climb up and look for bombers, that's an especially attractive option considering that the plane has a radar set and enough firepower to take down larger targets without needing to pump them for too long. The only real catch is that the sustained rate of climb isn't really good enough to get the bombers before they drop, and frankly, some fighters will be able to climb up and stop you from intercepting the bombers. P-38s and XP-50s are a particular thorn, since both of them can easily outmaneuver the HE-219 at any altitude, and they can outclimb it. Still, if you're able to get your guns onto basically anything, it's going to drop. Now, the guns themselves have different ballistics, which can be a blessing and a curse. It can make it a little bit more difficult to do precise aiming unless you're using convergence and vertical targeting, but the good news is that all of the Hannons hit very hard, so you don't usually need to do precise careful aiming. Just dumping ammo into the general direction of your target is a legitimate use of this plane, and it can often be enough to bring things down. If I'm being totally honest, I sometimes get kills with this thing that I really don't deserve. Now, another popular option with the HE-219 is, believe it or not, close air support. With the ground-pounding ammo belts, its cannons do hit hard enough to take out tanks from good vertical angles. And even if you don't pop them, you can usually do an enormous amount of damage and leave them spotted and disabled for your teammates to clean up. Plus, since enemy aircraft aren't spotted for you in ground RB, the radar set suddenly becomes quite relevant and can actually be an advantage if you fly air cover instead of attacking ground targets. If you have this plane and you never considered adding it to your tank lineup, you might be surprised at how effective this thing can be flying out into ground battles. Visually, I'm always a sucker for the looks of twin-engine prop fighters, and doubly so when they have huge dipole radar sets sticking off the front. I don't know why, but something about this plane just works for me. The paint job is okay, and there are some really good skins available out on the War Thunder Live website. Now, the landing performance of the HE-219 is excellent. It can drop gear and flaps at around 300 kilometers an hour, it has effective brakes, and a tricycle landing gear, so you won't nose over as you're slowing down. I find that even landing this plane with some pretty serious battle damage isn't too difficult, but if you lose your landing gear, it does have a tendency to break apart on belly landings. The cockpit is a placeholder. <sighs> I really wish the snail would put some more effort into the cockpits for premium aircraft that people, you know, pay money for, but whatever. 
The visibility isn't bad, and the instruments are easy to find, but the clumsy interior is pretty distracting in VR. Overall, it's a pretty weak cockpit. To close out on the Heinkel 219A7. This plane has an absolutely inappropriate amount of forward firepower. It has a radar set, it can absorb a fair amount of battle damage, it can actually pop tanks with its armored target ammo belt, and it gets premium bonuses. However, it's not especially maneuverable. Its climb rate isn't quite enough to reliably intercept bombers, and every aspect of its flight performance goes in the toilet at lower speeds. The final verdict on the HE-219 is that this plane is quirky, but it's very fun to use, and it actually ends up being pretty flexible to a good variety of different playstyles. The radar set is a fun gimmick at this low of a BR, and since this is a premium plane, it can actually be a pretty effective grinder for the mid to low tech tree. As always, thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.